the class. Wonderful. Here we are starting the second in the series of memoriam of the previous Rebbe, which he said when he, in 1927, when he was freed from prison and sent into exile. So the first mimer we already learned, which is that God takes, took a, uh, a, um, a cluster of grapes from Egypt, and the Jewish people, when they move around, so that really improves them, that really helps them. And especially because what it improved them to do was to say Nasa before Nishma. In other words, they had what thing called Masirat Nefesh. Here we go. The whole essence of Judaism is what they call in Hebrew Masirat Nefesh. In other words, not thinking about what you're going to get at all. At all. Thinking only about what God wants. And having faith that God really wants a good world. He really wants a good world. Not according to necessarily our standards, but according to his standards. And there was God wants a good world, but it requires self-sacrifice. In other words, sacrificing yourself, all of your plans, all of your ideas, even your ideas, spiritual ideas, going to heaven, having a nice family, <coughs> having nice children. Hashem will provide all these things. That's not your business. Your business is to do what Hashem wants. Where do we learn from that? Abraham. Abraham was about to sacrifice his son, would have wrecked his family, would have wrecked his future, would have wrecked his world to come. But that's the essence of Judaism. And as soon as the Jewish people left this, then there started trouble. That's why they worshipped the golden calf. After they got the Torah, after they saw God, they saw God at Mount Sinai, their souls jumped out of their bodies, they all got the Torah, they had great people with them, and everybody, even the greatest people, they all said, Let's think about ourselves. That's what we learned about a few weeks ago with Korach. Korach made a war against Moshe based on that campaign principle. I'm going to let you think about yourselves. And Moshe said, no, 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 no. You have to do what the Creator wants. That's why we're here in the world. <coughs> okay, but it's very difficult. It's not the nature of a person. That's why you have to have a Moses in every generation. You have to have a Moses. Without a Moses, then everybody... You can take the greatest things in the world, the Holy Torah, and you can use it into a selfish thing. I'm going to be great, I'm going to be big, I'm going to be I, I. Okay. That was the first mimer that the previous Rebbe said. That was the second one. By the way, the, the previous Rebbe was an example of this. He, was, he risked his life and the lives of his Hasidim, and they were all... all they gave their lives, a lot of them, to teach Jewish children Torah in communist Russia. Unheard of. And when they put the Rebbe into prison, as he refused to co cooperate at all with them, he said, I'm not going to let... And even when they let him free, he said, you go? He said if it means that I'm going to have to travel on Shabbos, I'm not going to go free. Because he didn't want them to... He wouldn't want to show that he had any concern about himself whatsoever. Only concern about... <clears throat> what they call making the God of the Jews real. What price are you pay, or willing to pay? Wait. The prince says, oh, I, I, I really want to be a doctor. I really want to be a doctor. You're willing to go to medical school? Of course, what's the question? I will is. He gets in, first day, too hard. I don't like it. Right? Maybe I'll be a stockbroker, something like that. I really want it, I really want it. But as soon as it gets hard, he doesn't want it anymore. Same thing with God, with serving. Oh, God, yes, I love God. God's Torah is wonderful. You willing to sacrifice something? Of course, my whole life, everything. I'm... What about your money? No, no, that's a little bit good. So here we see the, pre the previous Re Rebbe, he sacrificed his life, his money, his power, his future, his past, his everything. Sacrificed everything just because doing what God wanted. He was alone there. Nobody even knew what he was doing in prison. If he wouldn't have gotten out alive, no one would have known the whole story. All right, that was the first time we learned that God takes the Jews out of Egypt in order for them to get, say, Nasa before Nishma. We will do and then we'll understand. That's the idea of self-sacrifice. That's how the Rebbe concluded the previous mimer. Next mimer. 
This was said in Yud Beis Tammuz. Yud Beis Tammuz was the date that the Rebbe, previous Rebbe, got the news that he was free totally. And because all the offices were closed in the city where he was in, the city of exile, so he had to wait till the next day to get his official papers. So it's Yud Beis Tammuz. We are now on page here. Look, open your pages, please. Mr. Smith was so good as to... Here, page Kuf Ayin Tess. See? You with me? Kuf Ayin Tess, it says. Like, the page should look like this. These are my more more fun than Kuntresim Aleph, Kuntresim of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. Bisyaita the Shemaya. All the minion more my more start off with these words, which in some ways this is the whole essence of the Mimer. Bait Samach Dalid, Bisyaita the Shemaya, with the help of God. What does it mean, the help of God? We're not expecting God to do everything. We have to do everything, and God will help us. And after we finish, we realize that really we really didn't do anything. Really, God did everything. He created us. He creates us. He gives us the power to do. He gives us life. But meanwhile, we have to do everything on our own. And Hashem helps. Hashem helps. <clears throat> and after the act, we realize that really we didn't do anything. It was all God doing everything. Everything was, was all miracles. So, to the Shemaya, with the help of God. Good morning, Herschel. See where we are? Not on that page. Yeah, there we go. That's it. Hashem li be'ozrai v'ani er'e besonai. We say this in Tehillim, in, in Hallel. What did King David say? King David had a lot of enemies. <coughs> a lot of enemies. King David says, Rabo misaros roshi sione chinom. More than the hairs on my head are those who hate me for no reason. King David. King David had enemies from the minute that he was born until the minute that he died. He had enemies all around him, from his own family, his best friends. Read the history of King David. Incredible. The only people, person that maybe had more enemies than King David was Moses. Everybody hated Moses. David at least had his certain circle of loyal soldiers. <coughs> Korach got everybody to go against him. Hashem li Ryan. What did King David say? God is with me. You have a pencil or a pen? You can write down words. We can write down words, huh? You know, Mr. Very good. Herschel has 47 pens. Gimel Parsha, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Pinchas, Yom, the, it was Tuesday, Pinchas, Yud Beis Tammuz, Tafresh Pei Zion, in Kostroma. Kostroma is a city of exile. Hashem li Ozrai. What did King David say? God is with me, be Ozrai, among my helpers. Hashem li, God is with me, be Ozrai, among my helpers. Vani and I, er eh, will see. I'll see revenge. I'll see the destruction. Er eh means I'll, right? I want to see my enemy suffer. Vani er eh, and I will see. Means I will see the destruction. The word in the destruction is implied. I will see the fall, the destruction, bisonai of my enemies. Uh, what's David saying here? You with me, Zechariah? Yes. King David is saying, I have a lot of enemies. They're all around me. They want to knock me down. They want to kill me. From the, every moment, all the time, I have no rest. And David was saying, King David was saying, God is with me among my helpers. Who are David's helpers? We'll see. And I will see revenge on my enemies. David is saying, I'm going to get them. They're all going to be destroyed. My enemies. Okay, the Rebbe is going to ask. I mean, that's not a permissible according to the Torah. You're not supposed to look for revenge. Revenge is lo takum, lo titor. You're not allowed to take revenge in the Torah. <coughs> I have a, have a, have a, a friend. <coughs> his, uh, he told me, his wife told me that... Uh, she had two 
grandchildren. She has several grandchildren. One, two of her grandchildren, one was five and the other one was three. And they were fighting over a little uh, bicycle. Fighting over a bicycle. The five-year-old one was stronger than the three-year-old one and he just took the bicycle. The other one said, ah, but it's my turn. He said, ah, ah, ah. The little one, the three-year-old one said, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to hit you. You'll see I'm going to hit you. So his grandmother said, took the three-year-old one and said, that, that's not permissible. These are religious Jews, right? You can't do, can't do that. Said, Why not? He said, because it says in the Torah, you're not allowed to take revenge. So he, she, he said, oh, yeah. He says, yeah, you're not allowed to take revenge. So he said, okay. Three minutes later, he came back. He went and he sat and said, thought. He came back three, four minutes later, and he said to his grandmother, the Torah is really hard, huh? Torah is really difficult. Because <laughs> he really wants to take revenge. Torah is really difficult, isn't it? And it's, it's sunk in, right? Then you have to keep Shabbos, you have to do this. But he really wants to take revenge. And the Torah says, I can't take revenge. I mean, he, he, after all, I took my bicycle. Come on, you know. Got to do something. He says, no, Torah says you can't do it. And here King David said he's going to do it. Uh, that's, how is that? We'll see. The Rebbe's going to ask this question. He nay, behold. Now, of course, this the Rebbe is going to say is relevant to himself because he had enemies on all sides also. And that's why he was put into prison. He was put into prison by Jews. <coughs> he nay, behold. Lush and a pasuk. The language of this sentence in, in Psalms and Tehillim, ain the lo havana, is not understood kalal at all. <clears throat> what in the world is King David saying over here? L'cha'ora, at first glance, Tehine, behold, Bahashkafa. What's hashkafa mean? Glance. Glance means a hashkafa. Hashkifa mimon kachecha ala shaman. Hashkafa is also our way of looking at the world. Right, hashkafa, our way of looking at the world. It's also used for that. But lashkif usually means to look over, at, to look over something, to, how do you say, uh, what's the word in English, there's a good word in English for it, to, uh, I guess, view is not the word, but okay, to look over something, yeah. observe, but observe casually, it's not observe is also, observe is more exact, hashkafa means a general looking over, hashkafa rishona, at the first glance, Mashma, it implies she'adam, that a person yesh lo ozrim, has helpers. Rabim, a lot of helpers. Ve'akodesh baruch hu, and God, who is imahem, with them. Seems from here that what is King David saying? They have to remember, the King David was a religious person. <laughs> King David believed in God. Right? He was, a, he, he was a really genuinely, right, had f- real faith in God. He had faith in God. And he had a lot of troubles, a lot of problems, King David. And these problems were serious problems. I mean, it's not just, you know, a hitman from the mafia wants to get you. Here he had thousands of hitmen. Everybody wanted to kill him. And these were organized. And there was one, at one point in his life, his son, his, uh, his chosen son, Absalom, got the whole entire people against him. King David, he had to run away. He had to run away. He had to make a war against him. Some wanted to kill him. <clears throat> King David knows that only God helps. And God sends people. God works through, works through nature. But really, it's only God doing it. That's what a, a genuinely... That's the message of the Jews. That God is doing it all and that God does things through nature and He does things through us. Like I said, we have to do all the work, right? And really we realize that it's all God. But nevertheless, it's all God. And if anybody realized that it was King David, it says King David is the Mashiach. King David was the first Mashiach. The Rambam says King David was the first Messiah. He saved all the Jews, got rid of all the enemies, strengthened of this, prepared the way for the Holy Temple. <clears throat> the MS who, the truth is, Asher Ein Od Milvado. Not only is the only helper God, the only existence is God. The only existence there is is God. That's the message of Judaism to the world. The only existence there is is God. And God is creating everything. He's creating the evil people also. That's a big question. Look in the Tanya. 
He explains how does God create evil? Why does he do it? The chick sixth chapter, the twenty fourth chapter. Well, no, revenge is another thing. We'll see. Ra, Kulavado, only God is a little... Listen, according to the Torah, there are some, for instance, crimes that are punishable by death. According to the Torah, you're, you can make war. You can protect yourself. You can destroy your enemies. <laughs> right? Here we're, here we're not talking about making war, protecting yourself. Here, David and Melech is saying, I'm going to take revenge. That's not permissible. But the Rebbe didn't get to that question yet. Let's see. What does it mean? Let's take the first part of the sentence. King David said, God is with me. That's King David said it. God is with me among my helpers. Says the Rebbe, who are these helpers? All there is is God. Hu Yisbarech. Hu Habore. He creates, be with me here. Fourth line down. First word of the line is Varak. Hu Yisbarech. Hu Habore. He is the creator. Mehave Umechaya et Adam. He creates and enlivens every person. For Ozer lo and helps him call Asher lo and everything that a person has. Kamosha Ketuva Rambam. Like the Rambam, like Maimonides writes in his book. Now the Maimonides, he wrote a book which is 12 books that cover the whole entire Torah from the creation of the world within the angels with all the different level, how a person should act, how a person should, what attitudes people should have, how a person should eat, huh? Pe- how people should eat. Well, just one, let me, one minute. The Rambam says, Yesod, Yesod, the foundation of foundations, the Amur, the Chachma, and the pillar of wisdom is, Leda to know, Sheyesh Sham Motzei Rishon, that all there is is one original creator, Mamsi Kalan Insa, and he brings out everything there is into existence. But call it, now the Rambam is a law book. It's not a Kabbalah book. The Rambam says, all there is, the call and imsa'im, and everything that exists. Mishamayim from the heavens, the oretz and the earth, umasha beinayim, and the, what is between them, lo nimsa'u, don't exist. Ela me'emiti timatso. They only exist, everything you see that is in the world that exists only exists because God is creating it. If so, how can King David say that there's, I have other helpers and God is one of them? Which we'll see in one minute. Turn it off and then turn it on.